Yes people, what is happening, how are we all doing and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be doing a full LEGO Fortnite Season 1 review. And that is pretty much everything you need to know for the purposes of this video, so let's not waste any more time, let's jump straight into things and let's do this. As we're fastly approaching Chapter 5 Season 2 of Fortnite, it's fair to say that our original kind of season of LEGO Fortnite is coming to an end. Although, yes, technically not really called a season, I think we can classify it as the first major period of this game mode. And there's no better time than now to talk about all of the positives and all of the negatives that we've experienced since LEGO Fortnite dropped. So I think it's fair to say that on the 7th of December 2023, when LEGO Fortnite first arrived into the world, it pretty much took everybody by storm. It was absolutely blowing up. The number of concurrent players was insane, somewhere between 1-2 million the majority of the time. It was crazy. It was pretty much absolutely destroying every other mode we've got in Fortnite and pulling in streamers from all over the world. Some of the biggest Fortnite players in the world were jumping over to take a look at LEGO Fortnite and it was even bringing people back to the game that used to play in the OG days. It was doing everything right and providing players with some really, really entertaining stuff to do. With the launch of the game, we of course got access to tons of content, including three biomes, the grasslands, the dry valley and the frostlands. And it brought a whole host of machinery for people to use in their brand new villages, also giving people access to epic tools that you're able to craft through your crafting bench. And of course, we can't really forget about the whole host of wildlife that people were going up against all across the three biomes. It was a big update bringing tons of content to the game, and I think it's fair to say that I have enjoyed myself a massive amount. I'm pretty much level 300 in Fortnite, which I don't think I've ever got to in a season before, and that is solely from playing LEGO. I think it's important to mention as well that the arrival of LEGO Fortnite of course brought us LEGO skins too that we'd never seen in the game before. And there were quite a few of us before the game arrived that were worried that they'd be selling LEGO Lego skins separately and if you wanted to get hold of these things you were going to have to spend twice as much. And I have to say big shout out to Epic because that is not something that they did. If you buy a normal Battle Royale skin in Fortnite you just get the Lego version for free which I think was a really really good choice to help out the player base. And not only that but they started releasing different Lego versions of skins that already existed in the game and if you'd already bought those from the shop you were literally getting hundreds of Lego Fortnite skins for free. It was a very very smart choice from the developers and I know for a fact that it was something that the Fortnite fans really, really appreciated. So it all sounds absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? It was all positive, it was all great, the numbers for LEGO Fortnite were insane. Sadly though, it wasn't to last. I'm stating the obvious here when I say that the numbers of players playing LEGO Fortnite has absolutely fallen off a cliff, unfortunately. And why exactly is this? I think if you ask pretty much any Fortnite fan out there, they would just say a lack of content and updates. If you drop a brand new open world survival LEGO mode in Fortnite, it's pretty obvious to expect that people are going to grind this thing. They're going to go crazy, they're going to try and do everything they possibly can, and that is exactly what they did. And so within a few weeks, I think the majority of players would probably tell you the content had gotten pretty dry. If you've managed to do everything such as building a village in each biome, unlocking all of the buildings and the stuff that you really wanted to be able to create, you were kind of stuck after that. There wasn't really an end game to it. So of course the numbers started to drop fairly rapidly. So when the first LEGO Fortnite update arrived, there were a lot of people who were pretty optimistic they were going to do something crazy and the numbers would go flying back up again. And as we know, that did not happen because Epic dropped an update that for most people just really wasn't good enough. It was mostly quality of life changes to improve the overall performance of the game and fix certain things, which I do totally understand, but I'm not really sure I would say that for a first major update to LEGO Fortnite, it was enough to actually get people to play the game again, and I can understand why they didn't if they were already a bit bored. Because the only brand new thing that it actually added into the game was a launch pad, an item that's existed in BR for years, and something that quite frankly in LEGO Fortnite is pretty useless. And I think at that point, a lot of LEGO Fortnite players who were more casual just completely gave up. I wouldn't say it was the smartest move on Epic's part, even if they did actually make some smart changes with fixing a lot of stuff that really needed it in the game. And not all of the quality of life changes were actually received positively by the community. There were a lot of things that Epic decided to change that players weren't fans of. One of the major ones being able to fix your tools by putting them in the chest and then taking them out again. Although that wasn't a feature and was technically a glitch, players really, really liked it. And why exactly is that? Because Epic gave us no way to be able to fix our tools in LEGO Fortnite whatsoever. 
So what did the player base do? They essentially found an exploit which allowed them to do that instead. I can understand removing the exploit if you don't want it in the game, but at the same time, surely you've got to give us the way to fix our tools, otherwise you're just completely screwing us over. And sadly, I would say for quite a few players, it was a little bit of a nail in the coffin moment. They just decided, okay then, if you're going to do that to me, I just can't be bothered to pick this game mode up again. Not particularly smart from Epic in my opinion, and I think maybe they should have thought a little bit more about this before making the choice. The updates did continue though as we progressed through this first season and when the next one rolled around people were expecting good things again and I would say sadly once again it didn't really reach the heights they were looking for. Because when the next update rolled around, to be honest, we got something very, very similar to the previous one. Once again, tons of quality of life updates, fixes to the game and things players wanted sorted, but only one brand new item, the hunting dagger. And I think most Fortnite fans would probably put that on a similar level to the launch pad that we got previously. It wasn't great, it wasn't particularly useful, and let's be real here, no one is using this thing instead of an epic sword. Everybody appreciates devs fixing things in the game, you can't really disagree with that. However, once again, in this update, we got things that people weren't even asking for. The grappler item was essentially destroyed and now useless. It was one of the only things that you could still put into a chest, take out again, and it would refill the charges on it. They completely got rid of that. It made the grappler useless because it's only got 30 charges. Nobody was bothering to use their resources to craft that when it would last them about five minutes. It's really, really simple in my eyes. That item should either be unlimited, just like the glider is, or you should have some way to be able to refill the charges, because otherwise I just see no point in using it. Once again, I don't think this was a smart choice from Epic. And after these two very, very lacklustre updates, the player base was pretty much non-existent. It had gone from somewhere in the region of 1.5 million players playing on a daily basis to around 50 to 100,000. Don't get me wrong, nobody expected those numbers to stay up in the 1 and 2 million area. However, to lose that amount in such a small period of time had to be disappointing for Epic. But then again, I do kind of feel in some ways they brought it upon themselves. You need to do everything you possibly can to try and maintain as many of those players as you possibly can. And they didn't do that. The updates they provided throughout the season up to the point I'm talking about now just weren't impressive enough. With that said though, the next one I think definitely was. Because it was now time for the Gone Fishing update. And when LEGO Fortnite first launched, this was the kind of thing I was hoping for every single time we got a LEGO Fortnite update. Don't get me wrong, that might be expecting a little bit too much, but this was the kind of thing I was really hoping for. Themed updates coming to the game, brand new items, brand new machinery, the addition of fish. This is everything that players were looking for, but I would say sadly it was a little bit too late for some. There's no doubt that it was easily the best update of the season, of course, outside the launch of the game mode. But again, wasn't enough to bring back a ton of those players who'd once again move back over to Battle Royale. The numbers have improved slightly, don't get me wrong, but compared to what we got at launch, it's not even in the same league. I consider it to be an absolutely fantastic update and I've really enjoyed my time with the content that they gave us, but I think again it's fair to say for the vast majority of players who'd already left, it was too little too late. But it was not the only major thing that happened in LEGO Fortnite as we approached the end of Chapter 5 Season 1. Just days ago, we got our first ever LEGO Fortnite UEFN maps dropping in the game with an obby mode and also raft survival. Don't get me wrong, okay? These are some basic ass game modes. However, I don't think many people expected LEGO Fortnite to be out for less than three months and for Epic to be already dropping UEFN maps. That is pretty crazy. Because not only does it mean that we're getting a couple of UEFN maps like this in the game, they've also confirmed they're going to be doing many more in the future, and it opens the door for LEGO Fortnite Creative to arrive very soon, where players all across the community are going to be able to make their own LEGO maps. I don't think anybody can argue that that is absolutely huge for the longevity of this game mode. It could even be bigger than the actual launch of it itself. Because just like Creative, it's going to provide endless content for people. Even if you are a little bit bored of survival because you've done everything you wanted to do and you're not really a fan of the updates, LEGO Fortnite Creative is going to give endless game modes for people to play. It's going to be incredible. And although, yes, it's in the very early stages at the moment, I would personally say it's got to be one of the biggest and coolest things they've done this season, and I can't wait to see what it's going to bring in the future. So overall then, in terms of the first what I would call season that we've had of LEGO Fortnite, it's been very interesting. It's had outrageously high highs, but it also has had some pretty low lows. 
It blew up coming out of the gate, got insane numbers of players, failed to capitalise on those and keep those players in the game, gave us a couple of very, very weak updates, including a tiny couple of items and just some quality of life updates. And then later in the season, dropped a really, really good update with Gone Fishing and brought creative maps to the game. So I would say it's probably finishing in a really strong way. But with that said, to cement itself as a very, very popular game mode and get those numbers back up, it has got to do a hell of a lot to bring players back. Also, to be honest, to keep the players that are still enjoying it now. It's also fair to say it's still missing very, very basic things. Like I mentioned earlier, there's no way to fix your tools, which is something players find really, really annoying. There's also no way to skip nighttime. You build yourself a bed and use it as a spawn point, but unlike Minecraft, you can't skip the night. People, including myself, absolutely hate that because it can be very, very annoying playing at night. You can barely see anything. And those are two just very small examples of things that they definitely need to change and introduce once we go into the next season. Along with what I would say it needs to be better content coming to the game. If you want to pull people in back from Battle Royale again, Epic, you're going to have to do a lot more than you've done so far. However, with that said, me personally, I have had a brilliant time with LEGO Fortnite since it launched. As I mentioned earlier, I'm nearly level 300 in Fortnite. I've never, ever had that before, and I didn't even buy any tiers. I've played the game mode regularly since it launched. I've played the game mode regularly since it launched. I've built a ton of villages. I've really, really enjoyed my time. And quite frankly, it's all that I'm doing in Fortnite currently. So my overall opinion of what I would call the first season of LEGO Fortnite has overall been very, very positive. But I'm not sure the vast majority of Fortnite players would agree with that. I think it's fair to say that it's definitely split people in the community. There's the pretty hardcore LEGO Fortnite players who are really, really enjoying things. As for the more casual ones, though, they're just not in there anymore. So overall, well done, Epic. A big round of applause for what you have accomplished this season. But as I mentioned before, you've got a lot to do in the future as we move forward into Season 2. And so there we go then, people. That is going to be everything for today's video. I guess I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.